Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mike here at Game From Scratch and Epic Games have just released Unreal Engine 4.22 Preview 1. Now these are kind of a combination between the most useless releases and the most interesting. Basically most useless because they are the most beta. These should not be used in production, but most interesting because this is a preview of what is coming. This is what 4.22 is going to be all about. These are the core features or priority under development right now for Unreal Engine. So the next major release, the new features in that release are primarily in this release today. So it gives you an idea of what the features holds, but also the least stability you could ever imagine. And now I'm going to go on and show you the worst demonstration of the newest most marquee feature in Unreal Engine 4.22 and then I will show you exactly why this demonstration sucks so bad. So what is the newest most exciting new feature in Unreal Engine 4.22? Well it is here. Edit, go into your project settings, dun, dun, dun. scroll on down here to rendering and then scroll on down here quite a ways and you will find this grayed out box right there. This turns on ray tracing support. This is DXR or um, basically if you bought yourself a shiny new GeForce GTX 2060, 2070 or 2080 card and you're an Unreal Engine developer, well you can finally play with that card. There's some hoops you have to jump through and we will get to them in a second. But unfortunately, I can't demonstrate the new real time uh, ray tracing or path tracing functionality because I don't have a supported card. And I probably, in all honesty, am going to skip till the next generation because um, I think this generations are going to be outmatched pretty badly by the next generation. Anyways, regardless, I don't have the supported hardware to make uh, DXR work, but there are some hoops you're going to jump through and I will show you the process because this is pretty much 100% undocumented. So if you do have an RTX card and you want to see how you can use it in Unreal Engine, Stay tuned, I will show you that. Now next up, let's go through uh, the Unreal Engine blog and we'll walk through some of the uh, marquee features of this release. I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail. I'm not gonna read this to you because uh, frankly, I will link it down below. Here's the blog post, the top level, and here you can see the major new features. So we've got support for real-time ray tracing, editor utility widget, widgets, uh, we have blueprint indexing optimizations. Basically, they have um, deferred some of the blueprint processing until you've done a search to make uh, dealing with blueprints faster. Uh, virtual production updates, Oculus Quest headset support, which is weird because I always thought that was in there already, but I guess it's not. And another key change here is the Unreal Audio Engine is now on by default. So it's been available for a few releases now, but it has not been the norm. So now when you're doing audio coding inside of the Unreal Engine, you're now defaulting to their newly implemented audio engine, not something external like FMOD or um, other underlying audio systems. So those are the big things in this release. Now, of course, you can drill down uh, and I will link this in the link to the link down below. Uh, but you can see here there are a number of fixes and unsolved issues also in the 4.2.2 releases. And there are a number of other features in here as well. Uh, so you, you can see they've got uh, an animation budgeting system in early access. There's a new plugin for sharing animation across multiple different things. So basically controlling flocks of actors. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the audio engine is now on. Time Synth is a new clip-based synth component focused on providing designers with sample accurate start stop and concatenation sound playback. So you're seeing actually a fair number of improvements in the audio tools in general. That's probably just a direct result of them moving to their in-house. Uh, same with Niagara. Niagara keeps getting some love because it's a fairly new feature. We'll get to that in a second. Now this one shocked the heck out of me. So we've got automation tools from their gauntlet um, command line driving driving uh, or execution tool. Uh, we've got here Visual Studio 2019 support has been added. Now Lumberyard, maybe pay attention here. It's very cool to see support for an IDE come so quickly. And I, I'm actually kind of tempted to check out Visual Studio 2019 because unlike some previous versions, it has very good side-by-side -side support. And since Visual Studio 2017, the installation process doesn't install all kinds of crap. So it's easy to clean up or remove. So I'm really tempted to check out Visual Studio Studio 2019, but I'm amazed that Unreal Engine already supports it because again, it's a, a few months down the road at least. Another one that is very interesting, well, build times because God, the build process in Unreal Engine does need any improvement it can get. So that's definitely nice. Improvements to the Unreal build tool and Unreal header tool to improve C++ iteration times. That's nice. Um, this one is for Windows people only, but it's also another big deal. This is uh, long file system, long file name support has been added. Uh, before you were limited to 260 characters in Windows and then after that point, it, it just mostly broke. 
And so you would run into these situations where you installed your program into like C colon program file slash epic for slash Unreal Engine. And then it installed, you know, audio slash SDK slash 1.44 slash blah, blah, blah. And then on and on. And eventually you're at 260 characters of total path name and kaboom. Very unreliable and things that could happen did happen. There's always been a kind of a weakness of uh, Windows going back to when it had like the 8.3 limitation on file names. Um, and it's been a persistent problem. And with the recent update to Windows Anniversary Edition, they support long file names, but the apps have to support it as well. So basically, Epic Game or Unreal Engine has opted in to support long file names. I still hold, and I to this day, I don't put spaces in file names of co code that is going to be compiled, and I don't use long file names. So I still put things in C colon slash dev slash my name. That's it. And that is generally your number one way to get around these bugaboos when you're dealing with Windows 10. So even though long file names are supported experimentally, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole, but hopefully for the future, that will be a nice new thing. New material editor, um, analyzer is available under the window debugger tool. Um, we got blueprint. There's the optimization I was talking about earlier. So they improve the editor startup and load times by deferring blueprint search data re-indexing until a global find and blueprints tab is open. Now I also assume that that means when you first do your first blueprint find and search, it's it's going to be slower, but I would rather defer it until I actually need it than indexing that up front if I'm never going to use it. A number of mobile updates. Again, they were dog fooded pretty heavily on um, their development of uh, Fortnite, and I think we're still starting to see some of these improvements come downstream. We've also got some improvements to Steam's networking, Steamworks, uh, including the ability to custom name your new server and some other functionality there. And Niagara, as I mentioned earlier on, is getting some updates in love, and I would expect to see this more and more each update um, because Niagara was just introduced last version. Now, if you don't know, Niagara is their GPU accelerated particle system. Uh, gives you a lot more control over uh, what you can do with the particles and interacting with them. It's a much more powerful particle effect system. Uh, the old system is still in place, by the way, so you don't need to use Niagara, but expect to see Niagara keep getting more and more and more functionality because it's pretty new. And some physics upgrades and cloth support. And then finally, again, actually, I guess not finally, there's a couple other things, but the big one is the um, ray tracing support. And unfortunately, like I said, I can't demonstrate that to you because I do not have the hardware to demonstrate that to you. We also got some updates to the sequencer, virtual production updates, uh, including things like real-time composition and composure, um, a bunch of things I don't understand because I am not in virtual production at all. And then again, on the VR slash AR slash XR slash too many acronyms front, uh, we've got support for Unreal Engine 4 on Oculus Quest. That's the new all-in-one uh, kind of version of the Oculus Rift for Android, but all in one without need for a phone or anything else like that. And HoloLens remote streaming support has been added through Windows Mixed Reality plugin. And that is essentially it. Now, if you, unlike myself, have access to an RTX card and you want to look at getting it started, this is the extent of instruction that I could find. So what you need to do is enable skin caching and ray tracing. I already showed you the ray tracing text box, that sadly grayed out thing on my computer. You need to turn that on, but you need to turn on skin cache first. You need to use Direct3D12 by adding the DX12 command line parameter. Uh, you need to use the ray tracing by adding the ray tracing command line parameter. And you need to have Windows 10, which I do have the uh, October 2018 update, and the NVIDIA RTX card, which I do not have. And once you've got that, Theoretically, all the functionality should be enabled and available for you, and that functionality is listed here. And unfortunately, there is no documentation on it, and I cannot play with it because I don't have the right hardware. So that is basically it. That is the new 4.22. Uh, I think you'll agree that definitely the real-time ray tracing is the marquee feature here. Nice to see Niagara improving. I really like to see early support for Visual Studio 2019. The audio system is maturing, but yeah, I think you could safely say that the ray tracing is the biggie feature of this release. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Is there enough there to keep you excited? Do you have an RTX card? Are you looking forward to real-time ray tracing? Or are you like me kind of think that maybe it's kind of, this is a nascent part of ray tracing evolution and we're gonna need the next generation of hardware to really take advantage of it. It'll also be interesting to see once AMD gets their DXR implementation out there, how well we're gonna be supporting multitudes of devices. And if the first gen, sometimes when you get into like the first gen of this kind of hardware, it's never really good on your generation, but hey, you guys are taking it for the team so that when the rest of us get into ray tracing, it's like great stuff. <laughs> so let me know what you think. You excited about this release? You excited about ray tracing or do you not care? at all. Let me know. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later.
Goodbye.